Hello again. I'm on a roll today. This is my second video. Usually just do them every few days. Um, so in this video, I wanted to uh, show you how to use I and I, uh, pretty much anything with I and I, I and I write, I and I read, and how the file kind of works for you. I and I files are a great way to store data. Uh, whenever you create a variable, once you close out your script, it wipes them from the memory, so you lose anything that you had done. So maybe, you know, you turn your computer off, turn it on the next day. You want that information to still be there. So you would save it to an INI file, and it can recall it later. This is really great uh, at work. I use it kind of as like a database for my uh, GUIs, as a way to update information at the end of the day, grab it the next day, and continue from where I left off. You can use it for a lot of really cool stuff, uh, reading files. Uh, I know I've used it before to uh, check usernames and say, hey, is this username on this file? Okay, they're allowed to have access to this part of the program. So it can be used for a lot of really cool stuff. I'm just going to do a simple one here today, which is saving some basic text. So let's get started. I did notice in my last uh, few videos uh, it might have been a little bit hard to read the text I was uh, displaying, so I uh, went ahead and increased that. Sorry about that on the previous videos, uh, but from going forth, hopefully it's a lot easier to read. I do post all my uh, code down to the description, just so you can review it later if you need to, and manipulate it however you want. It's free to use. So the first thing I want to do is, in my script, I want to define where I'm saving my path uh, for my INI file. So I'm just using my desktop here, as you see. You definitely want to make sure at the end you do put .ini, or anytime you're doing this, you know, .txt for text files, just so it knows what to read. You can add wildcards in there. Um, that's something you can look up on the site if you're kind of curious of how those work. Next, I'm just going to use F1 like I always do for my GUI that I uh, pre-built. Um, so I added a update button, a save button. I'll show you those. Uh, in like my last video having to do with GUIs, I showed you uh, that you do need to put a variable here for the GUI control. And I'm just going to leave it blank. Uh, I got my GUI destroy. It just means I closed out of the uh, program or the GUI. Uh, when I click the update button, I put it as go read the I and I. So it's going to jump down to here, read the I and I. And here's where it's going to read. So the way this code works, I and I read, telling it what to do, comma, I and I info. That is going to be the variable that the text in the file is going to be stored to. I and I path, the path that we have up here. Uh, I'm just using it as a variable. You could if you wanted to could actually put it down here like uh, this. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend using a variable because if I updated this location, I would also have to update it down here. But doing it this way, no matter how many reads or writes I have, I only have to change it in one location. So it's very helpful to do that. My info, that's basically the section that you're going to be looking at. And I'll show you once I create the file what that kind of looks like and then which uh, variable it's supposed to be reading. I then want to update that information using the GUI control, which I showed you in GUI 4 uh, video that I did recently. And uh, you can you know look that up, but here's where it's grabbing that info. And it's moving it down here to put it up here. And then return. Now if I push save, it's going to jump down here to this handler. I want to submit the GUI, that way that variable in this edit box gets saved to INI info, which is a variable, so I put the percent signs around it. But we're going to use an INI write this time. So I've got that file path, my info, the title, and then info1, the section. So let's show you how that works so you can better understand this code a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. I'm going to push F1. So I don't actually have an INI file created yet. So if I try to do update, I'm going to get an error because it couldn't find that file. It doesn't know what to do. It's just going to display error. So let's go ahead and try to put some information in there. Um, so I could be like, okay, it's the end of the day. 
I finished on order number equals 89. I want to remember where I left off. I'm going to go ahead and push save. It's going to close out that GUI. And it just created an INI file here. So an INI file is going to have that little gearbox there. You can still open it. And there's that title I was talking about. Or section, I believe it's called. Move that over. Right there, my info. Right there. So you want to put those in these little brackets here, like that. So that's saying, okay, first thing I want to do, look in this section. Next thing I want to do, grab the text for info1. Info1. And there's my saved text that I did. So now, let's close the program out. And let's relaunch it. I'm going to push update, and boom, order number 89. So I grabbed that info, same thing, my info, that section, get that variable. So with the INI files, you know, you can expand on them quite a bit. So for this section, I could add, you know, quite a lot. Info 2, info 3, and these can be called whatever you want them to be. Then I can also create new sections. So I could call this other info. And I can actually uh, duplicate the variable there too, if I really want it to. Just because in the code, I would just change this to say other info. So it would know to go section one, info one. And knows that it's not supposed to grab this info one, it's supposed to grab this one. So that one's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I could add an update button here. I could say, I could change that to say, uh, grab section one. I could add another button here that says grab section two. That way if I wanted to grab from the first section where this was stored, where I can push this and get a completely different thing. You know, I could say 90 or something, or be like, time worked, save update. Now you can use this for other stuff other than text. You can store it uh, to have data for drop down boxes in case you ever want to have your update boxes constantly change. Maybe you have new clients come in, you want to make sure they're added to that drop down box. You can use INI files to store uh, XY coordinates of your GUI. Uh, in the last video I showed you how to save the location of where your GUI was last located at. You can make it actually save those location so that every single time you open it, it goes there instead. Now with this one, for the INI read and the INI write, or just the INI read actually, I have it so I click a, a button and then it reads. If I wanted to, I could actually move this up here so that it automatically just gets that information from the beginning of the script. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Make sure I saved it. Oop, definitely missing something there. Okay, I see what I'm missing there. So when you're going to have it read first, because there's no GUI control here, I do need to go ahead and add the variable here, right here where it gets saved, to there. Um, that way it does display when I first open. There we go. Work a little too fast sometimes there. So. That's one way to make it so that the information just automatically pops up when you uh, want to. So I can just be like, hi, I worked hard today, not save. I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the program, and boom. Awesome. If you guys want to know more about INI files, definitely let me know. Um, it's something I've used quite a bit kind of in a database uh, format and also in a user check uh, format, just making sure people aren't accessing certain parts of the program that they're not supposed to be accessing. 
because I definitely will expand on anything you guys have questions on. Comment below. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe. It helps me out know what you guys uh, are interested in, what you guys are watching, so I know to do more of those. Good night, everybody.